So good morning. It's March 25th, 2022 at uh, 10.15 a.m. my time. And uh, I just hit record on this this morning because, God damn, there's a lot going on in my life that's just tragic and some could potentially be magic. But I tell you, I feel like I'm on the crossroads, man. The devil is on the other side and that I'm carrying this mountain of truth that absolutely has to connect with the people that need to see it in a way that converges the spirit of a tidal wave of truth and justice that purges corruption. I'm dealing with this on all levels, man. It's so fucking monumentally whacked. But like always, you know, a couple of things that I got to turn you on to is please go to YouTube, check out Patrick Lovell, Truth Bombs the Con. Even if you don't watch any videos, please like and subscribe and tell everyone that there is a movement afoot to try to purge corruption and it needs millions upon millions of us. My friends, I focus mostly on what created the housing collapse, which is just an extension of what our financial system has become which owns our government. They're at the apex of everything. And so when people ask me sometimes in these notes, they're like, well, what does this have to do with now? And like I say, I don't want to call people stupid, but you're stupid if you don't understand that the financial system of this country has completely overrun all of the institutions of government, which means they've corrupted all of the institutions of government. And there's a way and a methodology that they've done that's, that's absolutely ridiculous. You couldn't make a script that would you know, that people would believe, a movie that people would believe because it's so absolutely outrageous and insane because of the nature and the magnitude of what the Federal Reserve's role in all of this is, okay? I'm not going to go into the whole, you know, every single aspect of this this morning because the, 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 the point that I need to make to you is that, again, I'm going to repeat myself, go to YouTube, click and like, subscribe and like on um, Patrick Global Truth Bombs the Con. We've got to get that to the thousands and thousands of people that are checking this out on TikTok. I mean, I just, we're like getting now closer to 800,000 and we're well over a million on uh, hashtag the kind and the collective efforts of all of the different um, hashtags have gotten us over 3 million views and unbelievable amounts of uh, questions and comments. But I need to speak to victims, okay? I know that there are victims out there of domestic violence, of some sort of betrayal from friends, family, the system, cops, your religion, whatever the case is. And I think what happens, and I don't know this from personal experience, although I'm a victim of the financial system, but it's slightly different. You know, when you are so completely betrayed by something you trust, it creates this sort of cataclysmic, you know, just rupture in your brain to where you fall completely. And it's understandable because I'm kind of in the midst of it right now. And I'm in the midst of it right now because the things that I hold most true and dear um, are literally in the process of being taken away from me in a sense that I could never comprehend. You know, and I, and I, and I have this struggle with God every day. It's like, what is my crime? My crime was I got freaking plowed, set up, victimized by a system of corruption that I knew intuitively in the aftermath, but I didn't have the answers. And so I go on this freaking mammoth, multi-state, multi-year journey, connecting with the most important voices and names and revelations in the history, quite frankly, of this country. And that's not hyperbolic. It's the freaking truth that basically got all of it in a nutshell, which is the Ark of the Covenant or the Holy Grail that has the answers that can take down corruption. If the millions of you that are victims of this came together to understand the truth, to join me on a freaking mission to create the resurrection of liberty and justice for all. So you can check out www.tacon.tv. It's two bucks an episode on all the platforms. And we're going to get it back on Apple, not Apple, on Amazon Prime, I think, in a week because there was some technical problems. And it's free if you go to the library and you subscribe to a thing called Hoopla. So we've got all the answers covered. All you have to do is say, you know what? I'm not going to be a victim anymore because this is what I don't understand. And I'm dealing with this in my personal life. If someone becomes, I don't know, an alcoholic or an addict or they're you know, down on their last rung, you know, and I know a lot of people of you are this, or maybe you know people like this, but they don't want help. 
They want to go down and down further and further and further because they've lost all hope, because they've lost all dignity, because they've lost all correlation to, you know, what's right and what's wrong because everything's wrong. And so they just quit. And I'm pretty convinced that's what millions of you out there are like, whether you're victims of the housing collapse, the opioid collapse, the economic collapse, you know, the collapse of institutions, the collapse of religions, the collapse of this and that, you know, it's all the same kind of stuff that's like, you know, if, if, if you're in a freaking congregation and you're, you're there to like, you know, pour your soul in, into the virtue of your religion or your God or whatever the case may be. And then, you know, the, the hierarchy of the, the priesthood, you know, happens to be this, you know, supposed figure that is an extension or an expression of God. And then that person ends up raping the congregation. That happens all the time. It's sickening. And it's sickening that people allow that to happen. Why would you let evil win? That's what I don't understand. That's not who I am. I've been a brawler my entire life, right? If I see something wrong, I get into it. And you know what? I like it. I love it. I love to win against evil. That's what I am. And so here I am wrestling with God, right? At this stage of the game, the way I kind of configured it was... We got the truth of all truths to, you know, the world and that everybody would sit up, pay attention, especially those that were victims of this madness. They get hip to it. They come together. Then the mainstream media starts to go, oh, my God. Then there's like, you know, a lot of people purchasing the truth and spreading it around because it's certainly marked in a fair way, in a reasonable way to reach all the people because we live in a capitalist society where you pay for everything. But then again, like I've said, we've made it free. So there's there's no excuses. It's just getting you in the door. And why am I trying to convert you? Because this society of democracy and liberty and justice for all and the integrity of law depends on the citizen to wake up. And that's not cliche. Being woke is not a joke unless it's in this Michigas of some freaking self-help, you know, spirituality bullshit. What I'm giving you are the absolute facts of how corruption works. By, I work, by working with those on the inside that were the professionals of our institutions who tell us exactly how it works. Because if, you're on, if you are informed, you cannot get played by politicians lying to you or telling you half-truths or a media that continues to lie to you ad nauseum. Look, I am so pissed off, I can't even see straight. You know, a couple of days ago, I mentioned this in one of my, let's call them what they are. I mean, they're sermons, really. But I happened to watch this fantastic documentary on Netflix that was the turning point in the story of 9-11. I don't know why it took me so long to get to it, but really the thing that struck me the hardest were these patriotic GIs that go and risk their life for the United States and everything that they had to endure when they come to understand that, A, nobody gave a shit about 9-11 at this stage of the game because it just got you know, conflated and all this other crap and Saudi Arabia is still walking around like they own the place and they just beheaded 89, you know, people like a week ago that's barely on the radar of anybody and they continue to bomb mercilessly and, uh, you know, uh, uh, destroy Yemenis, the Yemenis people with our arms that we're supporting them because of their oil even after their, their, their hierarchy was involved with allowing 9-11 to happen in some way that we could easily get the answers if we just investigated it. But instead, we had 20 years of corruption in Afghanistan that fueled warlords and drug lords and sex traffickers as opposed to like what, imams and like this, you know, hyper freaking conservative, you know, Middle Ages, Dark Ages religion. I mean, come on, corruption or freaking like the autocracy. So you look at that in the con from, you know, the, the, uh, the, the configuration of what's kind of like manifesting in this, you know, midterms and what could lead to the 2024 election, presidential election, and everything that we're under the thumb of. And I always consider that we've got two choices at this stage of the game. You've got either corruption or you've got corruption with a white supremacist confederacy bent. Both of those are non-choices for somebody who believes in liberty and justice for all. Because I had discovered a long time ago that we have two columns of our soul. You've got character, integrity, and dignity on one side, or you've got hypocrisy, duplicity, and complicity. You, you know, skew one way or the other to those, those, uh, those, uh, you know, those, those poles, depending on the circumstance. If cowards are complicit or hypocritical, or, com uh, you know, uh, they just simply are liars. They're liars and cheats. And a lot of these guys pretend like they believe in God. 
right? How many times have we seen in my life's history, and I go back to the 80s pretty much, right, 70s and 80s, where we saw like, you know, all of these like snake oil salesmen that are, you know, either, you know, what was that guy that went down to uh, South America and everybody drank the Kool-Aid because it was poisonous because they were all part of this cult? You know, or you go to a, you know, a religious, uh, uh, you know, church where it's like Tammy Faye and, and, and Jim Baker were basically just raping the congregation for money. And I mean, and people buy that shit, right? Why do they buy that shit? Well, it's the same reason they buy Donald Trump as a guy who's an answer to the corruption when he's been corrupt the entire time. I know I'm pissing off a lot of people. I hope I am because I'm fucking pissed. I'm so fucking pissed at people who continue to bend the knee to evil and corruption. What is it going to take? Look, I'm trying to start a, a, a civil rights movement. I'm not Martin Luther King. No, I am not, you know, uh, uh, peaceful in my, in my, um, you know, in my pronunciation of how much I hate what's happening. Okay. But I'm not looking to start a bloody revolution. What I'm doing is trying to use the levers of power that still barely exist by the hair of their chinny chin chin with the critical mass movement equipped with the facts that then force our elected officials or actually propel a new wing of a party that's actually, let's call it the Justice Party, even though I know that exists, but predicated on the knowledge of corruption and then the vision and the outcome of how to purge corruption. And it's real easy. You get money out of politics. You don't let the bad guys get away with it. And then you change Fed Reserve policy where Congress mandates what's going on in the Fed instead of the private banking sector that's actually corrupt. Now, will that prevent Congress from being corrupt downstream? Only if we put people in the, in the institution that aren't corrupt because we have accountability. Because you got to have what we call the Pecora hearing now. The Pecora hearing is basically facilitated through the information that we created in the con that then we put in the hands of the professionals that come out of the con with the critical mass of people to put Wall Street on freaking trial. Is this something that happens hyperbolically out in, you know, like, you know, like, I don't know, somewhere in Washington, D.C., maybe on a mall that happens before it actually happens within Congress or in the Supreme Court justice? Maybe, but it should happen nevertheless in, in a way that actually configures it within government because, you know, we're looking at this nomination of Ketanji, Ketanji uh, Jackson Brown, you know, off the heels of finding out yesterday that Clarence Thomas's wife literally consulted with Trump's White House to say, don't give up on the election. Meanwhile, you know, we've got this African-American DA in, in uh, New York who is not prosecuting Trump for all of the freaking insane crimes that he's guilty of, which is corruption. Is this all about Trump? No, I keep telling you over and over and over, Trump is a mid-level player at best. Unless, of course, he's president, then he's at the freaking apex of the power system that can manipulate this for all of his crony friends, including Putin. All these white, right, you know, right-wing guys are basically, you know, singing Putin's tune right now. Is Putin, you know, in this grand scheme of things, the ultimate bad guy? You know, there's so many bad guys because it's all corrupt. Is he a good guy? Hell no. But the bottom line is that I don't care about, um, uh, I care primarily about cleansing the system because we have created a financial policy that goes into a financial system that's utterly corrupt that owns our government. You can't have life, liberty, and justice for all uh, if, the, if the judiciary is corrupt. And you can't teach your children to like, you know, be honest and do things that are right if this is the system we have. You've got to teach your children to lie and cheat. That's the only way this whole system makes sense because that's what we reward. We reward people who have lied and stolen and cheated and destroyed tens of millions of people and they all just stay down. They just stay down on their knees. They look for somebody to save them. I'm throwing you a lifeline. I'm not going to save you. We need each other to save the freaking country and the future. And quite frankly, the capability or the capacity of the freaking uh, earth to sustain us. Because we as a species, if we don't get a hold of this stuff, aren't going to be around in 200 years. Does that matter to you and me? Well, it should. It really should. But it doesn't. And that's what kills me. Because free Will and common sense and informed people, I believe, make better decisions than being sellouts to corruption.
And that's what I'm desperately, desperately trying to get your attention to do. Please join us. Onwards and upwards. Hashtag the resurrection. Hashtag Exodus. Hashtag the truth is marching. Hashtag failure is not an option. Hashtag the kind. Hashtag Patrick Lovell truth bombs the kind. Please join us. Onwards and upwards.